So this evening we're going to look at how gravity and the ground can really be a, an, an assistance, an assisting force to help us to wind down uh, physically and also mentally. Uh, I've, I've often spoken in my classes about how when we're uh, feeling perhaps a bit anxious or preoccupied with the future, with what's going to happen, uh, with trying to control the future by, by trying to plan and predict, uh, our uh, subtle energy uh, really goes up into our headspace and our, our thinking capacity, our thinking energy. And there's a huge amount of that going on at the moment, maybe for you uh, in business or work or uh, education, whatever you work in, or your children or your grandchildren, you know, everything kind of being a bit up in the air during the crisis. Um, so we might spend a lot of time reading the news, uh, checking what's happening in other countries to try and figure out whether something similar might happen here. So our, our mind might be uh, a lot in the future and a lot with, with planning and trying to figure things out. Also, if we have any kind of personal stuff going on alongside, it may or may not be COVID related, uh, if we're trying to figure out how we feel about things or decisions about things, often it feels like our head becomes quite full. I think there's the use of screens as well, uh, maybe spending more time on video calls, for example, uh, exacerbates that a little bit too. And when we're talking to other people on screen as well, it's often uh, just seeing their their head or the, the top of the torso and the head. So we might start to forget more than usual that we have a body and that there is uh, a whole world down there underneath our feet, literally a whole planet underneath our feet. So starting by lying on the ground uh, on our backs, and perhaps with your knees bent, if you feel like that benefits your lower back, or with your legs straight, if you feel that benefits your lower back. So you can check that out. And your arms are by your side, initially just in any position that's comfortable. So you might be in the yoga relaxation pose known as corpse posture or shavasana in Sanskrit. Uh, or you might have your uh, hands on your belly, on your rib cage, and a small cushion or yoga block under your head, uh, so that your your chin is kind of releasing down very slightly towards your chest. In any case, your chin is not pointing up towards the ceiling. any comfortable position and then we can take a moment to check check in with the back of our body noticing how the back of our body makes contact with the floor it can be very helpful to close our eyes again to be less aware of the screen perhaps really need to see what I'm doing for the time being. I am demonstrating a couple of possibilities of lying down, but those of you who do yoga regularly will know what's comfortable for you. And with our eyes closed, we can be much more aware of what's happening in our bodies. And in this case, the back of the body, the points of contact with the ground. And 
the back of your head, your shoulder blades. back of your pelvis, your heels or the soles of your feet, depending on whether your knees are bent or not. And noticing whether you have a sense that you're able to Really let go of the weight of your body. Sometimes I know I'm lying down and I'm not levitating or anything and I'm not lifting, actively lifting any part of my body up, but it somehow feels like I'm not fully kind of letting go yet. Not really surrendering to gravity. And this can be super subtle, so don't, don't worry if you don't really uh, understand experientially what, I, what I'm talking about. But perhaps you have a, a similar sense, and I think sometimes it's because my, my mind, my attention isn't completely there in the back of my body yet. I haven't fully arrived in the back of my body it, it might be that or it might be that there's still a very subtle um, sort of contraction in my body and I'm not fully relaxed yet not fully at ease yet and it might help to imagine that the ground is kind of coming up to meet you I'm kind of welcoming you, like Mother Earth welcoming you in her arms. And it might help to do a few gently sighing out breaths. Breathing out fully, softening the belly on the in breath. Perhaps with an intention to let go of your day so far and to, to let go on your out breath of any mental activity that's been preoccupying your mind. Lovely. And then if your knees are bent, for a moment straighten your legs and notice how that is and how it changes the relationship between the back of your body and the ground. And if you, your legs have been straight, then bend your knees and also notice how that changes your relationship with the ground. And then bending your knees again, if you have just um, straightened them. And take a moment to find the most comfortable way, place to, to stand your feet. So we call this uh, semi-supine, lying down with your knees bent and your feet flat on the ground.
And then taking your arms out to shoulder level with your palms turned up. And then making very soft fists, curling your fingers around your thumbs. Very, very softly and with as little effort as possible. And then on an out breath, we're going to roll our arms forwards. So you're rolling towards the thumbs. And then on the in breath, coming back to where you started. So you're rolling over the knuckles of the fists that you've made. On the out breath, rolling forwards. On the in breath, coming back. Very, very soft. And noticing how much effort you might be putting in. Maybe you could roll further. Maybe you're already rolling as far as you can. And then I'd like to ask you to only do about 50% of what you could do. This is a nice way to kind of wind down in the evening to kind of do things with less effort to slack off a little bit. And then when you next roll your palms upwards, obviously you've made fists, but the palms would be facing up if you opened your hands. Now we're going to roll backwards. So on the out breath, Rolling the arms backwards, so you now be rolling towards the knuckles of the index fingers and back. And again, initially you can see you know, how far you can take this movement and then take it back to about 50% of what you know you could do. Keeping it very, very soft. And keep allowing your body to fully rest as, as much as you can, giving your weight to the ground. Being with your breathing, on the exhale, you're rolling back backwards and on the inhale, you're coming back to where you started. Lovely, and then bringing your arms back to uh, neutral position, maybe a bit lower than your shoulders if that's more comfortable for you. And then bringing your attention to the soles of your feet again on the floor. And bringing your awareness to your right foot. 
to the imprint that your right foot makes on the ground. And then very gently pressing down through your right foot, just a tiny bit so you're not even lifting up through your hip. Just making a bit more of an imprint and doing that a few times. And if you like, you can press down on the exhale, release on the inhale. That helps you to kind of stay with your movement with your body in a relaxed way and then you can coordinate with the breath in that way. And then letting your right foot just rest there again. Notice how the imprint, the footprint of your right foot feels now. And then doing the same on the left side, noticing the footprint might feel different from the right side. And then pressing down very lightly and releasing. Just a few times. So not much is happening. It's just a tiny, tiny press down and release. Staying with the subtle sensations in your body. Noticing subtlety also helps us to kind of really slow down and, and paying attention in a way that's quite embodied. We've kind of, the only way to notice this is by being present in our body. We can't see it, it's not obvious, it's not very external. And we kind of have to let our attention go deep inside rather than outward. And often when we kind of feel a bit wired, uh, our attention is kind of a bit, bit out, a bit up, a bit shaky, a bit buzzy. Uh, and this is a very different way of being attentive and aware. And then letting your left foot Rest again and notice the imprint. And noticing again the whole well, the back of your body and how it makes contact with the ground. And then straightening your legs and resting your legs. And again, noticing for a moment the way that your body makes contact with the ground in that position. And then bending your knees again. And if you've lowered your arms a bit, you can bring them back to shoulder level. Once again, finding that comfortable place or what seems to be the most comfortable place to have your your feet and that might change as well as as we start to move again and so now we're starting again with the right foot we're going to press down through the right foot a little bit more so it might be instigating a turning of your pelvis, a rolling of your pelvis to the left and back. So the right side will lift up a bit and then the left side will roll, start to roll over. And you can notice how that is and you might just do a tiny kind of twist 
tiny movement. Or it might feel quite nice to, to roll over a bit. And I'm going to uh, ask you if your head wants to, to roll with it to the left, to let your head roll to the left. So often in yoga, in the lying down twists, the head rolls in the opposite direction. Uh, but it's quite nice sometimes to let the whole of the torso roll to the same side and your right arm will kind of get left behind and you can let your right shoulder lift a bit, just let it come with you a little bit. So we're instigating the turning, the rolling from the pressing down of the right foot. Trying this a few more times. And you might find that your knees go quite wide apart and that's fine. Just allowing your body to again find the kind of easiest way to roll into this. And then when you next come back to the center. You can try it on the other side. So with your uh, left foot pressing down. Be rolling to the right side. So left foot pressing down. The pelvis begins to lift on the left side and your right leg, if you just allow it to be heavy, can go slowly towards the floor and help you to roll over. And you can put the brakes on a little bit so that you don't just flop. So that gives us that, that uh, neurological control over the muscles. And then if your legs go all the way to the floor, your right leg does, then you can let go completely for a moment with gravity before you come back up. And notice, although this is very gentle, you might notice that it's actually kind of more effort than you might think. So if it feels a bit exhausting, it's absolutely fine to, you know, to stop and rest. Lovely. And then coming back to the center. And again, noticing with your knees bent, your connection to the ground. And then straightening your legs and noticing your connection with the ground in that position. Still really letting go with gravity of the weight of your body. And then going to invite you, everything's in invitation. So again, if you're enjoying resting, please rest. I'm going to invite you to bring your knees in towards you but with your knees fairly wide so there's a bit of kind of space to breathe you're not squashing on your belly some people have been saying they're getting a a quarantine belly from eating a lot of cake I've been eating quite a lot of cake so letting your belly Relax. And then again, your arms out to the side at about shoulder level. And uh, this time, kind of letting the body roll from side to side by letting the 
first the left leg drop towards the floor letting the right leg follow and then to come back bring the right leg back over and let that go over to the right and then your pelvis will probably roll fairly easily towards the right side and finding the easiest way to roll from side to side. Letting gravity do the work. And you can go very slowly if you like, or you might kind of enjoy going a little faster. Feel how your, your back is massaged by the ground. And then again, when your legs go to the left, let your head go to the left. And you might even want to bring your right arm over so you're, you're briefly in a fetal position. And then leading with the right leg to come back. Let the left leg follow. Rolling over, let the head go with you and maybe bring the left arm over so you spend the moment on your right side in a fetal position and then rolling back again. And if it's kind of rather delicious to take a few breaths on your side, with your arms in front and your knees in front, you can do that, of course. Hope you've got space to do it. It's taking up a bit more room maybe than, uh, than the confines of your yoga mat. So these are kind of quite um, primordial movements, they're often called. Some of you might have heard of them. Um, uh, the yoga teacher John Sturck, he does a lot of this kind of thing. Um, and we had Beverly Nolan here in Canterbury uh, just before the, the lockdown. She was doing things like this with us. It's a very natural way to roll and move. Uh, one of the first movements we learn as babies. And um, it's very relaxing apparently for the body. It can release a lot of the, the feel good hormone, oxytocin, sometimes called the love hormone. And uh, can be very soothing as long as you know, we can find a way into it that's comfortable for our bodies. And then when you next come back to the center, you can uh, Hug your knees in towards your chest for a moment and take your feet up towards the ceiling. So sometimes this is called happy baby pose. It does have a Sanskrit name as well, which I can never remember. So you can keep your knees quite bent. You could hold around the backs of your thighs or you could even hold your toes, but don't make an effort to reach, only if it's very easy to do that. In either case, you can wriggle your toes a little bit. You can keep your eyes closed or your gaze very soft. You can rotate your ankles a couple of times, playing with your Foot movements, what movements can you make here? And then lower our feet back down, and resting down, noticing your contact with the floor with your knees bent and then with your legs straight. Really giving in to gravity and noticing if that's getting perhaps a bit easier. Maybe you feel a bit more naturally connected to the earth.
And then we're going to do one more rolling movement. Again, starting by bringing your knees in towards your chest with the, the slightly wide knee position. And your arms out to the side. And then this time, first roll your head to the left. So if you're thinking and talking about how babies move. Uh, they're often stimulated to move because they're curious about something. They want to play with something. They're reaching for something. So if you roll your head to the left and then let your lower body follow. So, and then let your arm come across as well back to that fetal position. And you can let your right arm that's coming across slightly reach beyond the left. Uh, beyond, yeah, beyond the left, that's it. And then to come back, again, you can lead with your head. So start to roll your head to the right side and then your arm will probably follow and then let your lower body follow. And then you're looking towards your right hand and then your left arm can follow and you can let your top hand stretch slightly beyond the bottom hand as if you're reaching for a, a toy. And then again, let your head roll back first, then your arm and then let your lower body follow. So it can feel quite different depending on which part of the body goes first and kind of takes the lead. And then we can make it even more subtle. So when you next roll to a, a, another side, it doesn't matter where you are, you can start with your eyes. So opening your eyes and kind of first starting to look up towards the ceiling and notice how your head will want to follow and leading with your eyes as if you're really wanting to see what's on the other side. And your head follows and then your arm follows and then the rest of the body follows. And then going the other way, so this is Nice for our eyes as well, if we've been looking at screens a lot. Notice how it's really quite hard to not let your head follow your eyes. These are all kind of programmed to go together, to move together. Finishing either by rolling to the right side or doing an extra one to the left side and then again coming back to the centre. Take your time and then take a couple of breaths in semi-supine with your knees bent, noticing how your body feels on the floor. And then straightening your legs, maybe lowering your arms a bit as well. So you're coming into Shavasana or the corpse pose. Your arms a little distance away from your body, so they're not, not sort of tucked closely to your side. You're a little bit spread out. Your feet a bit wider than hip width. And you might notice that each time you come to rest, that the placement of your body is different, even though you're just trying to relax, right? So maybe each time it feels subtly different, even though you're 
trying not to do anything, basically. Lovely, and then bending your knees again. And hugging your knees in towards your chest and taking a couple of breaths in up and us now or knee to chest pose. Lovely, and then from up and asana, uh, you can roll onto your side again so the that fetal position the c-shaped curve of the spine in a relaxing way can be very nice and relaxing too it's often a position people sleep in uh, but not used that much in yoga And noticing which side you've rolled onto. So uh, often um, people say in, in uh, yoga, it's helpful to roll onto your right side. And reasons given for that are sometimes that your heart is more placed to the left side of the body. But, you know, it's not bad for your heart to lie on your right side. If it was, then, you know, probably most of us would have had some heart issues by now because I often sleep on my left side. And sometimes the reason given is a, is a pranic or subtle energy reason, which is that if we're lying on our right side, um, the left nostril after a while is likely to become a bit more open to the breath than the right side. And the left nostril is associated, left nostril breathing is associating with calm, with a kind of a settling, calming the subtle energy body. And the right side breathing is associated with energizing ourselves waking ourselves up uh, and this I have done this with students and asked many people and that this does seem to be quite a common thing so if you have trouble sleeping you could try starting off on your right side and after a while seeing if your left nostril opens a bit more and it might help you sleep um, if you have trouble getting out of bed in the morning, you just kind of wake up and you've got that feeling, oh no, I don't want to get up. Uh, I often lie on my left side for a little while with my eyes open and kind of just looking out at the world. And then sometimes I start to feel like my right nostril opens up a bit and I feel a bit more energetic. So this, these are very subtle things, but uh, they can help. So then uh, we'll come to all fours, and that might feel quite, quite active after all this rolling around. Uh, so if you don't feel like it, feel free to just lie on your back again, or uh, do some more rolling, or do some more lying on your side, maybe on the other side, noticing your breathing. It's all fine. So following ease and settling in the evening is often about kind of acknowledging tiredness, not fighting it. If we're kind of struggling against it, we might end up in that place where we're feeling tired and wired. Tara Brach calls it twired. So it's that horrible sensation that you know you're very tired, but you're just kind of still in that activated place. So from uh, all fours, again, you can always do this on your forearms if you're uh, uncomfortable with your wrists, that's absolutely fine. But if you're okay on all fours, your hands there, you can 
Just start to move your body around your hands and knees a little bit. So your whole body making a bit of a circle around. And you could think of it as um, drawing a, a, a flat circle, which is parallel to the floor with the sacrum, with the flat bit at the back of your pelvis, at the base of your spine. And of course your whole torso is then going to follow. Keep it very small or you can make it a bit bigger. Notice how it feels on your body. And then going the other way as well. Taking care of knees too, so making it smaller might be more comfortable for your knees or using a cushion like I am. And then we can have another moment of surrendering to gravity in the child's pose and inviting you to take your knees quite wide, maybe about mat width apart. And to rest down, you could have your arms forwards or uh, making a cushion with your forearms for your forehead. And some people call this swan pose or hair pose. And if your knees don't like this so much, you might be a bit higher up with your hips. So that's fine too, you could do something like this. And you could also be supporting your head if you've got some hay fever blocked sinuses or something like that, though the weather today is probably a bit less hay feverish. And whichever modified version you're doing. Again, see if you can surrender to gravity here. So I often find as well that this is a part of um, not being, not sleeping very well at the start of the night. So there's different forms of not sleeping very well. Sometimes we have trouble going to sleep and sometimes we wake up through the night or we wake up very early and can't get back to sleep. So the first one of finding it hard to go to sleep initially or get us even get ourselves to bed on time might be uh, some kind of resistance to surrendering to the night like children even if they're tired they, they never want to go to bed you know, there's too many other tempting things to do so this this pose can help us embody that surrendering surrendering to the to the evening to the night to the need to sleep And then for the last few minutes of the class, choosing any posture that you would like to relax in now. So it's a short relaxation because uh, the whole of the session has hopefully been quite relaxing. So you might like to lie on your front for a change or even stay in child pose a bit longer or on your side. I'll also demonstrate one that, that I quite like um, called the flapping fish. Some of you might know that, some of you might not know it. I'm just finding the best angle for my camera. So the, the flapping fish 
it's a bit like the recovery position as well if you've done your first aid training you bring your arm you can't see my whole body but you can see most of it my left arm is sort of supporting my head my right knee is up my left leg stretched out and my other arm can sort of be in front and create a bit of a pad here maybe for my head so that's the the flapping fish it's called in in yoga and uh, it's quite nice and it might not be super comfortable for a long relaxation although some people actually sleep like that but uh, it's quite a nice one to, to try sometimes Settling down once more, now letting go into stillness. I'm going to read a poem which partly inspired the, the class. And uh, it's by Rainer Maria Rilke, a German poet. And for some reason, there is an Eng this is an English translation, but it's always presented with the title in German, uh, which is Then etwas mir vom Fenster fällt, which means something like when something falls away from me through the window. My German isn't super great, but something, something like that. When something falls out of the window away from me. And then the rest of the poem is translated in English. So I'd like you to, to relax still with this awareness of gravity and the weight of your body as you hear the poem. How surely gravity's law, strong as an ocean current, takes hold of even the smallest thing and pulls it towards the heart of the world. Everything, each stone, blossom, child, is held in place. Only we, in our arrogance, push out beyond what we each belong to for some empty freedom. If we surrendered to Earth's intelligence, we could rise up rooted like trees. Instead, we entangle ourselves in knots of our own making and struggle lonely and confused. So, like children, we begin again to learn from the things because they are in God's heart. They have never left him. This is what the things can teach us. To fall, patiently to trust our heaviness. Even a bird has to do that before he can fly. Trusting your body's heaviness and gravity's law. Pulling us towards the heart of the world. And surrendering to that. So that when we have had some rest, we can rise up again and stand again.
And there's always at the end of an evening class, especially this one that's a little bit later. If you want to stay there, follow ease, snooze. And if you do not wish to come back to the screen, that's absolutely fine. Um, if you want to get up now or you have a few more things to do, I, I would encourage you to do them slowly and gently with as little effort as you can and to bring yourself back up away from the ground and you might first want to open your eyes or take a few breaths lying on your left side so that your right side might be a bit more open through the nostrils and when you're ready to move a bit more you might like to Stretch your arms up towards the ceiling, wriggle your fingers, a bit like plants looking for the light. All the climbing plants are coming up at the moment, the ivy is climbing up the trees and the passion flower outside my door is going up the, the drain pipe. So that sense of gently coming back up away from the earth up towards the light and the sky and take your time give yourself as much time as you have want or need <laughs> <laughs>